Hello, um, this is Savas from GitLab. I am a senior front-end engineer, and um, I recently received my new MacBook, and um, I was waiting for this for a long time uh, for two reasons. One, because of the new MacBook, and then the second one, uh, because I we have an issue uh, to facilitate uh, the um the process to set up the the, the gitlab runner on 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 a local environment so i thought while i'm going to set up my computer i'm also uh I'm, I'm, i can also record a video uh to walk through uh, the required steps so before we get started um there are some requirements uh, which i'm not going to go through uh in this video and uh, they are uh, setting up SSH uh, and then installing Brew, and uh, we'll be using Docker and Colima for uh, the GitLab runner. So also installing those uh, tools. Once you have them, uh, we can go ahead and then start installing GDK. So we have a one-liner script, um, which you can find in the description of this video. So you don't have to type this manually. And uh, let's go ahead, let's copy that. And then I'm gonna go inside my projects folder and then execute the script. So the script will install a GDK in the um, location that we uh, provide here. And then it will clone the repository. Uh, by default, it's uh, the GitLab repository. So you can go ahead and then press enter. Um, I'm not gonna do that in this video because it takes quite a bit to um, to install all the dependencies. I already done that before uh, this video, so we should have it here in our GDK folder. Uh, perfect. So we're there. Now, um, the GDK is configured through the G GDK YAML file. Currently, it's empty, and um, we're gonna we're gonna update that uh, in a moment. But before we do that, the, um, the install script will make use of ASDF to install all the required um, tools. So for instance, uh, and also the versions. So for instance, uh, Ruby or Golang or uh, Node.js, they, they're all going to be installed uh, by, by ASDF. And when we check our, um, so, if, if you if you go ahead and then type which Ruby so in my case this is now the updated one uh, but it should be by default it should be I think it's user bin and then Ru Ruby yeah it's this one so we need to tell um, so we need to source this this the, the ASDF script uh, so that GDK makes use of the versions that it actually installed um, because otherwise it's going to use the system defaults uh, if there are any and um, and it may cause some 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 problems so let's go ahead and then um, let's source the I'm sorry not this one but this one uh, source uh, yeah I'm just gonna change so I spit over here take that so if you do that uh, it, it should be fine but um, just bear in mind that this script works only um, for this session of the terminal. And in order to um, make it persistent, we can go to our profile and then add the source here. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and start our GDK. taking a couple of seconds. Let me drink some water. All right, so our local host, let me just close this one. And then we see that it seems to be working. So this, this is the boot screen. Um, it will take a few seconds until uh, GitLab is ready, um, but I'm not gonna wait that because this page is already enough for me to, sh to show that it's, it's actually working. So um, next step 
is so now GDK is, 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 is running and we also want to install and configure the GitLab runner and GitLab runner runs inside a Docker container. So since Docker container is an isolated environment, it does not have access to our GDK instance on the host machine. And the next steps are going to provide um, the necessary configuration for Docker to communi communicate with uh, with the GDK, uh, with, the, with the GitLab instance, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and then uh, update our um, hosts file. Go here at this line. So basically we tell that this IP uh, resolves to gdk.test. We're gonna be using gdk test and the register test. If I'm not mistaken, this was uh, something regarding the container uh, registry, uh, something like that. But it's not that important for at least I guess uh, for this uh, for this example. So um, tuck. Let's go here. Um, next step is that we want to create a loopback interface. Uh, so go ahead and copy the script. And uh, right now, in theory, uh, Docker should be able to communicate with GDK uh, with GitLab instance through this this IP. So just bear in mind that this um, this command it's it's gonna reset if you reboot your computer. So if you want to persist that, uh, go ahead and then copy this um, this file. Um, so copy this content and then create a file called like this, and inside uh, just uh, paste the the, con the this content. This will tell the uh, it will create a a, um, a startup script. <clears throat> to configure the loopback interface. So now we've done that as well. Uh, and then the next step is to tell GitLab um, to use GDK test instead of localhost. We do this because if the Docker container inside the container tries to reach localhost, it's actually the container's localhost. So it's not reaching the host machine's localhost and uh, GDK test, it, we're basically creating a network um, with, the, um, with the configuration that we did uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, and we'll be using GDK test as a host name for that. So let's go ahead and then uh, type this command, GDK config set host name GDK test. Uh, it's gonna update the GDK file and let's go ahead and then also set the listen address which is this one, uh, 172.16.1.2.3.1. Uh, Perfect. So uh, if we check our GDK YAML file, now we see that these um, options are present. Perfect. Next step is to reconfigure our GDK. So the changes are updated. As you can see, the URL, uh, it's not using localhost anymore, but it's using GDK test. And um, after that, we're gonna restart uh, GDK. This is going to take a while, so I'm already going to do, to, to the next step to save some time. Um, and the next step is to install the runner. So let's go ahead, uh, let's clear this part. It was from the previous uh, recording uh, because <laughs> It's uh, sometimes I do mistakes while recording, so I have to go back and then restart. Anyways, so just installed uh, the GitLab runner. Um, I can close this one and then let's go back. So the last one was to reconfigure. So the reconfiguration is complete. So we're going to restart this uh, GDK restart and it should um, start to listen GDK test instead of localhost. So previously it was 127001, uh, but now it should be simply gdk.test. Go ahead and then, um, yeah. Is it working? Uh, I don't know. Let's try a new tab. Let's close this one. Hmm, it's working. Perfect. All right. 
So we have pulled the image um, and then the for for running for registering the, 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 the runner inside a container. Um, actually for registering the container, no, I'm sorry, for registering the runner uh, and we'll be using a container for this. So let's go ahead and then um, check the runners page here, admin and runners, and we have no registered runner uh, so far, which is normal. Um, we haven't configured anything yet. Um, yes, so next step is to register it. And for that, we're gonna be using this command docker. Uh, I'm sorry, you probably don't see this. Let's move my face here, or actually here. Uh, I like it more on the right side. Cool. Um, so docker run, uh, and then here we bind the host directory um, to the um, to the etc GitLab runner inside the container. Um, but be careful. Um, I think Docker does not uh, have access to the temp folder on Mac. Um, it took me a while to figure this out. Uh, so it may be the case if you see that uh, once you run this command, the the um, the config tumble is not created within the directory that we're going to create in a second. So um, let's create a directory um, on the, um, okay, uh, make there. I will create a directory GDK runner in uh, my lo in, in my home directory and then uh, GDK runner. So it's currently it's empty. Then let's go ahead. This is going to be GDK runner. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, so next thing we're gonna be asked some questions which we probably don't see right now. So let me move myself back to the bottom. Uh, yeah, and the first question is the URL of the GitLab instance. So that's gdk.test 3000 port. And then the registration token can be found on the runners page. And then there's a, a drop down here, register an instance runner. Uh, click on the copy to clipboard. Go back here, paste this token. And then um, description, we don't need it. Tags, we don't need it. Maintenance node, we don't need it. Um, executor is Docker. And then the default Docker image, we're going to use Alpine latest. Perfect. So if we check the GDK runner directory now, we should see the config tumble. Perfect. And if I check the content of this file, you will see that um, there is the runner configuration. Now, um, we want to tell GDK, uh, so GDK can, can um, run or spin up the Docker instance or the Docker um, or the GitLab runner when we start GDK and when we stop GDK, it stops also the GitLab uh, runner. And to do that, um, let's take this token here and then let's go back to our GDK folder, not this one, projects, GDK, and let's open our GDK YAML file. And then here we're gonna add some configuration. So we're gonna say the runner is enabled, that's true. Then the executor is Docker. And there was something else here, right? Uh, install mode is also Docker. The token is the one that we got from the config tumble. Um, it's just to be sure, let me check if this is cat uh, GDK runner config tumble. Um, yeah, it's the correct one. Perfect. Let's go back. Token. 
mm, extra hosts and then gdk dot test we bind it to this ip that this is the ip that we use to create the loopback interface um and yeah let's save the file and then let's reconfigure gdk this should take a couple of seconds uh, let me see if i missed anything we've done this we've done that cool so um once this is configured we should see our runner actually we see the runner here right now but it's never contacted um that's because it we just provided the configuration to gitlab yaml uh, and it's reconfiguring right now and then we will need to restart uh, gdk for, for the changes to be if, uh, in effect so gdk restart let's refresh the page If when the page loads, we see this little beautiful green icon, it means that we are successful. And uh, there we are, we say it, it's, the status is online. Uh, we can reach to our uh, runner, which means that now we can run a pipeline. And um, it's just probably just gonna work perfectly. Um, if you want to check the logs, by the way, of the runner, um, you have, I think you have two ways to do that. One is to inspect Docker, uh, take the container ID and then follow the logs. Um, and then the second one is GDK tail runner, I guess. Yes. So as you can see here, this one seems to be more detailed because the uh, Docker uh, displays the last uh, three lines, if I'm not mistaken, a little three or five lines. So um, yeah, there we are. We have GDK uh, installed. The GitLab instance is running locally. And then we have a GitLab runner uh, running locally. And uh, that should be it. I think if you have any questions or if you, um, if you need any assistance, just feel free to reach me out. If I can uh, help, um, I'll be more than happy to. And uh, I'll be leaving my contact details below the video and also the, um, the scripts so that you don't have to type. You can just copy paste. Uh, just make sure to change the user uh, path accordingly. And that should be it. Thanks for watching um, and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.